Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're looking at some people that got left at the altar. My friend was left at the altar by this woman because her mom opposed the marriage. The dude doesn't make a lot of money. And she ended up letting him know the night before, leaving him to cancel everything and letting everyone know. There was no way of letting everyone know that the wedding was canceled, so I printed out a most interesting man meme. I don't always cancel weddings, but when I do, I do it with a meme. And I glued it to the door of the place where the reception was supposed to take place. Stop it! I ended up just spending the night with him and another friend friend with some beer and a bottle of tequila. Yeah. Edit. To everyone asking, it's worse than you think. They got married a year later and right now are going through a divorce. Unexpected, I know. Really? I'm, I'm so surprised by that. Who would have thunk it? I think being left at the altar is like my worst nightmare. Oh, I'm picturing it. Oh God, imagine that happening. Oh my God! Met a guy, dated for a couple of years, I was head over heels, got engaged. We went on a week-long trip to meet his family. While we were planning the trip, my fiance kept giving me rules. Don't mention this thing about yourself. Don't tell them that. Should have been a warning, eh? I think, yeah, I think that, that might be a red flag. <laughs> we were visiting during the holidays, so there were a lot of holiday parties to attend. I needed to buy a lot of outfits for the parties, and the fiance wanted final approval on everything I bought. We stayed with an aunt and uncle. The whole household was strange. Who am I to judge? Wife never talked if her husband was in the room. Wife made plans while the husband was at work. Then he would arrive home, change all the plans, make trouble for everyone, and no one would say a word. Just rearrange everything. The uncle also scheduled all our time. He told us where to go, when to eat, and even when to go to bed. That's normal. The worst of it was the women in the family. They would either outright ignore me or they would maneuver me onto some place alone and then give me very nicely barbed insults. They looked at me with disgust or pity. I was never sure of which. They mocked my eating habits, my speech, and my clothes, which my fiance had picked out. By the end of the week, I was mostly just silent and trying to stay. Hi, Lisa. Hi. That's Lisa. She's my roommate. Want to come say hi? She's sweaty, she doesn't want to say hi. After we got back from the trip, I took a few weeks to think about things. Decided I couldn't live with that kind of shit for the rest of my life. I don't blame you. I think I would have been okay if my fiance would have been on my side, but he wasn't. He couldn't understand why I didn't have a fabulous time. Really? Huh. Okay. I found a new job in a different city, gave back the engagement ring on my way out of town. Not my finest hour. I didn't trust myself with him. He could talk me into anything. I couldn't stand the thought of becoming like his family or growing accustomed to be treated like that. I don't think I regret it, but sometimes I wonder. I don't think you should regret it at all. I think you dodged like a big bazooka, girlfriend. That was close. That's kind of nuts. Maybe he's just used to it. Some people are just used to that kind of behavior and they think it's fine because that's just like the only thing that they've known. Or maybe they treat you differently when he's there. So maybe he just doesn't get it. I wouldn't want to marry that person either. Considered leaving him at the altar. I managed to find the courage to call off the wedding two weeks prior. We only had been together about four months, friends for almost two years prior to dating. And he basically told me we were engaged and getting married. Didn't ask. He just, just, just told you like, you're my wife now? Cool. Thanks for asking. I was young and in love, so it took a long time to see that he was extremely mentally, emotionally abusive. I thought the fact that we shared a faith meant that he was a good guy and he'd never hurt me. He isolated me from all my friends on most of my family, did everything for me, so I almost never left his presence, except when I had to work and began to controlling almost every part of my life where I could be and when, with who, for how long. I had to be constantly in contact with him, either over FaceTime, phone call, or text. I honestly didn't even register it was happening until I realized I wasn't ready to be married to anyone at that point. And there were a lot of dreams I had that he had shot down. Seeing the world, a career change, going back to school. It always sucks when they make you feel bad about what you'd want to do in life, you know? That's always a sign that you're with the wrong person. But I don't think it's because they genuinely don't want the best for you. I think it's just because they don't really expect much of themselves either, you know? When I told him that I wanted to stay together, but I just felt like we were too young to get married and I wanted to wait, he blew up and grabbed my arm so hard he left bruises. The look in his eye made me honestly think that he could have seriously injured, killed me. He hadn't scared me like that. I knew it was time to get out before I couldn't. Oh, girlfriend, I don't ever regret leaving. I do regret not leaving sooner and telling someone what was happening. Looking back, I knew what was going on. I was just so afraid of being alone that I justified all of his actions. I'm now happily married to the most supportive and kind man. Yay! And I've done everything I dreamed of and more. That makes me so happy. I love a story with a happy ending. Some people never get out of it though. Consider yourself very lucky. My mom thought she'd been left at the altar by not only my dad, but the minister as well. She hated being the center of attention and didn't look up from the ground until she was almost down the aisle. When she did, there was nobody waiting for her. Just then the door behind the altar flew open. My dad ran out with his kilt flapping around, followed by the minister. Apparently they'd been drinking whiskey in the minister's office and hadn't realized the ceremony had started. So you're Scottish. <laughs>
Just a wild guess. Not at the altar, but I bailed just two days before we were headed to City Hall. It was green card marriage. On our second date, she mentioned that her visa was expiring in six months, and I jokingly proposed to her. We continued dating, were following for each other, and that proposal became much more real as the deadline approached. I backed out at the last minute because we just didn't agree on a few details. My life, my apartment, my dog. Living arrangements and finances were easy. What couldn't be negotiated was how seriously either of us wanted to take those vows. I wanted to at least attempt to be a married monogamous couple. She didn't want to commit to that. If she falls deeper in love, great. If not, we were just roommates. I miss her, but I think I dodged a bullet. I believe she would have vanished on me at some point and I could be in a real jam over immigration crime. Yeah, I think that you probably made the right decision. Oh goodness. Like that already must be such a fear if you're marrying someone that's like needs a green card, but for someone to like not even like think about committing to you and won't commit to you or say that they won't. Yeah, I, I think I think that she she walked into that one. Walked right into it. And that's okay. Didn't technically leave him at the altar, but 10 days before the wedding, I found out he was sleeping with someone else. No! It took me two days to decide not to get married. Then over the next three weeks, I discovered he was a sex addict. A what? And had been seeing other people for the entire nine years we were together. Got real close to being stuck in that nightmare. Thankful every day that I didn't go through with it. Thanks a lot! God is good. God is great. God saved you from a lifetime of unhappiness. I got left at the altar. He had spent the previous day drinking a lot of the time with his ex instead of helping me set up. <laughs> What? I yelled at him about it because he was late and he hadn't helped at all. He said he didn't want to get married because spending time with his ex made him realize that I wasn't as fun as she was because I was uncomfortable with him doing illicit substances. Kicked him out and still had the party. Yes! Love this for you. I told him to use that time to go home and pack up all his sh He did. And that's what's up. I mean, who says that? She lets me do illicit substances, therefore I like her more. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that that was like a prerequisite to like choosing a partner. Shouldn't you want someone that wants the best for you? A buddy of mine did and we were his accomplices. A buddy of ours was gonna marry this girl he'd known for a few years. He was expressing doubt about it, but racked it up to being nervous about marriage. The night before he broke down crying and thought he was making a mistake. We offered support and told him it would be okay. We said that if he didn't want to do it, he didn't have to, but we encouraged him to go through with it. Day of the wedding and everything is happening. The wedding has started. He's at the altar waiting. I don't know about other religions, but Mexican Catholic weddings have this moment before the the bride comes out where it's quiet with anticipation and everything's just waiting. My buddy is sweating like a madman. My other friends and I notice that he's about to pass out. Then it happens. The groom starts rocking back and forth. He looks like he's about to faint and he slowly starts side shuffling. My buddies look at each other and know what is about to happen. The groom turns to his right and starts heading out the door. Some people in the church notice and there's a gasp. He beelines to the door and goes outside. Me and my buddies follow him. At this point, I just thought he needed air. Nope. Talk about cold feet, eh? I think it's normal to get cold feet. I don't think it's normal to like almost faint at the altar. I think that's probably a sign that you're probably not supposed to get married to that person. He heads straight toward the sports car he rented. We yell at him, he yells at us to get in and we do. He turns on the car and starts making his way out of the parking lot as people in the church start to come out and yell. He takes off. We are yelling and screaming in the car and he has this dead serious look on his face. We end up in Vegas for the next few days. His phone is blowing up but he never answers it. The dude ends up joining the military and leaves to boot camp just two weeks after all of that. He stayed with us couch surfing for two weeks and disappeared from his bride, her family and even his. Last I heard of him, he'd served multiple tours overseas and was part of a recon unit. Haven't heard anything else from him in a few years. None of us have actually. The bride was devastated of course, but the last I heard she got married for reals and is very happy in her new relationship. God, the idea of someone like you think you're gonna marry someone and then they just like run away from you. Like I understand that it's a lot of pressure, but like couldn't you have figured it out before the wedding that you didn't want to marry me? <laughs> Ah. I left her on the day before because on the bachelor party for me, one of her friends who came with us as a keep an eye I won't cheat with a stripper, drunkenly confessed that he knew my fiance cheated on me with some douchebag for the last two months because she wanted one last fling. I also found out that some of my friends knew about it as well but didn't tell. Oh, She denied it but eventually confessed and tried to justify. We broke up of course. I ended up having to sue her for all the wedding payments, oh my god. I had to put out because she couldn't get back most of the down payments I put and her family would not help Help with the wedding because they're cheap skunks. I won and got all my money back because she was afraid it would all be known. I found out the douchebag is actually one of the bosses at her work. He is married. Oh my God. The last I heard of her, she got knocked up by said douchebag. He got custody of their child. She's living with her parents, no job wasting her life away. I kind of love that for you. Like I don't, but at the same time, it always makes it a little bit more palatable to know that they're not happy. <laughs> Am I terrible? Yes. Do I pretend to be anything other than that? No. Why are you surprised? Fair enough. My sister was left at the altar by 
my best mate and I was best man. He met my sister through me and they went out with each other for two years and were engaged for a year before the big day. We we're in the church at the front waiting for the bride with about 15 minutes to go. He says he needed the toilet and walks to the back of the church. A minute or so later, it hits me that the toilets aren't at the back of the church and I start to worry. So I go looking for him. He's not in the toilets, not around the church, nowhere to be found. My best mate had legged it. We didn't see or hear from him for three days, his own family for two days, and by then he was in Europe somewhere staying with a friend where he's been ever since three years now. He's never made any effort to explain, even to my sister. Oh my God, really? Like not even, no explanation whatsoever? You don't feel like you owe her something, man? Something? I swear, it's things like this that make you just terrified to get married. This happened to a previous work colleague. I had been working with him as a cleaner for four years and he had been with his then partner for a while. Everything seemed hunky-dory and soon enough he proposed to her and she accepted. Everything seemed to be progressing smoothly and I even went to his stag, which to this day, the most drunk I've ever been in my life. As the wedding day approaches, I arrive at work to find out from my boss that the wedding has been called off. Apparently his fiance was a lesbian! Spoiler alert. And had been cheating on him for a while. What I never understood is how she could accept the proposal. Surely when he was down on one knee, that would have been the ideal time to express how you feel. You would think so, yeah. Maybe she wasn't like certain she was a lesbian. Maybe she was still confused. But yes, I, I should think that maybe you should figure that out before agreeing to marry someone. Alrighty guys, those are some people that were left at the altar. Don't forget, subscribe!